Ankara, capital of the Republic of Turkey, this once provincial backwater is today one of the country's most modern cities. A vibrant world metropolis that offers a diverse variety of leisure time activities, as well as being steeped in both history and tradition. We begin in the modern area of the city, which became established in the 20th century. The Shije district is considered to be at its center. The square of the same name is also the main traffic junction, and from which all the most notable sites, as well as the old town, are readily accessible. The center of the square is indicated by a giant monument, the solar disk, the cultural symbol of the ancient Hittites, upon which is a deer. This is the heart of the city, and where vehicles and pedestrians appear to be in a hurry to compete with one another. One section of the square contains a park with wide pathways and pools with fountains. Here, city folk take in the sun, eat, chat, and do business with one another. The origins of the city date back to the second century BC. Here, at that time, was the Hittite settlement of Ankua that was situated along the main route from Hattatus to Sardis. The Romans also settled here and gave the new Roman province of Galatia its name, Ankira. In the 11th century, the city was ruled by the Seljuk, who introduced the Angora goat, and thus laid the foundation for the city's future name. On a hill to the north is the largest and most splendid mosque in Turkey, the Kocatepe Chamai. Between 1967 and 1988, this imposing tower was constructed with the help of private donations. A replica of the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, it has four minarets and accommodates around 20,000 worshippers. The Konchatepe Mosque is both a symbol of the devoutness of the people as well as being an important center of communication for the entire city. An impressive house of God whose splendor captivates all who come here and overwhelms with its magnificence. Throughout the day, many people gather here for various activities. So within the underground spaces of this important symbol of Islam are several tea houses. Still further forwards, the northern area of the city, the botanical gardens are located in a narrow valley along which snuggle the hills of Yukari Avranchi.
Small paths lead through the lush green splendor, and many people use these oases of tranquility for a well-deserved break from city life. The fragrant blossoms of spring are pure delight. Despite the heavy city traffic, several parks provide a temporary escape. The hill is crowned by a modern viewing tower, of which the highest platform can be reached by way of a high-speed lift. From here, the view curves over the roofs of the city, which played an important role in the Turkish War of Independence and prevented the partition of the nation. When General Mustafa Kemal founded the Republic here in 1923, the population of the small provincial town of Angora numbered only 30,000. By 1980, it had risen to 2 million, and soon it will reach 5 million. The Maltepe Chamai, a mosque inaugurated in 1959, is also situated in the new city. It was financed by the local people. It is constructed of white stone and brick, is 20 meters wide and long, with a dome that is 50 meters high. Today, 142 steps lead up to the balconies of both minarets, from which two imams and two muezzin call to the faithful. Ankara's old town is overlooked by a castle mound upon which the city's citadel extends above the pinnacle. The city's oldest settlement area is surrounded by one of the mighty castle walls and dates back to the time of the Hittites. The slope of the hill in front of the citadel is completely covered with gechikondas, a mass of quickly constructed buildings which at first only consisted of walls and a roof. Following the old Islamic rule of law, it was forbidden to take away a house with a roof from its owner. The same is true today, despite new laws. The Gechikondas are quite unique buildings, and many of those who reside in them originate from the region of the same name. The outer wall is about 1,500 meters long, and 15 of the original 18 bastions and towers still remain. The castle's basic layout was constructed at the time of Emperor Heraklios, who began its construction following the recapture of the city from the Persians. The internal section of the castle complex was first inhabited in Osman times and was for some time an impoverished and run-down residential district. This is where the settlements both within and without the castle originated. The 
The Aslanani Chamai, the lion's den mosque, is also to be found here. It is one of the city's few surviving timber-pillared religious buildings. The old structure once belonged to a Kalishi, a mosque district whose original buildings are no more. Now, with the exception of a graveyard, the area around the Lion's Den Mosque is no longer a reminder of what was once a religious area. The Hishaka Pisi is the main external gate of the castle complex. A relatively small, tunneled entrance. From here one can enter the interior of the fortress. It was inhabited in Osman times and was for many years a poverty-stricken neighborhood. Alleys that were designed to wend themselves up and down, confuse and bewilder, although do not distract from the ever-changing scenery. Following extensive renovation in recent years, attractive old Turkish dwellings have again risen from what was once a place of decayed old buildings. Following the main inner gate, a steep stairway leads to the main castle and its extensive walls. From here, the view is quite outstanding. It reaches across the rambling Gechikondas in the east and north to the modern city quarter in the south and west. From here, as soon becomes apparent, this place was chosen for its marvelous strategic location, an invincible structure from which to defend the city. Just beyond the main gate is the castle's oldest mosque, the Aladin Shamai, named after Aladin Kekubad. Bold inscriptions on the engraved walnut pulpit indicate that this religious building was built in 1178, although it has been renovated since that time. This rectangular stone building has a tiled roof. A minaret is supported by a stone plinth at the side of the mosque. Several supporting stone slabs in the external walls and a small cemetery complete this typical Seljuk mosque. Consequently, the occupants of the castle district enjoyed much religious support. Well-sheltered narrow alleys lead to small squares, some with green swathes and fountains. It is as if time has stood still.
Outside the castle walls, numerous merchants sell an abundance of dried fruit and spices. Many people come here to drink tea and just to see what's going on. A little further along the castle walls is the Museum of Anatolian Civilization. The Hittite Museum provides a fascinating insight into the ancient history of the Anatolians, from the Stone Age to Roman times. One of the most beautiful museums in the world is now located in the former Osmanic Market Hall, of which the dome was built in the 15th century. The exhibits here relate exclusively to traditional Anatolian artifacts, culture and traditional objects. From the old and recent Stone Ages to the Bronze Age and to images and pots that date back to the time of Assyrian trading posts. Judging by the range of exhibits, it's easy to understand Anatolia's importance in world history. As the empire of the Hittite of Hattusis was eventually extended and a political alliance with the Assyrians was agreed, the development of a greater empire began. A Greek epoch followed from which the exhibits are easy to recognize. It was from this period that the artistic style within the whole Mediterranean area was determined. Finally, Roman times, in which the Emperor Trajan in particular glorified, and to which the second century AD mainly related. The exhibits are so remarkable that they are tantamount to being a living history, helping one to delve back into a former era. quick photo in front of the museum, marking the end of a fascinating visit. At the bottom of the old town is the great Genschlik Parki. It contains artificial boating lakes, a sports stadium, and is a real hive of activity during the summer months. Its main attraction is the Pleasure Park, which is open all year round. Both young and old come here to enjoy its many attractions. A ride on the big wheel is particularly impressive and also provides a fine view of the park, as well as a glimpse of the old town. Here, the adventurers can test their courage and spend their leisure time in wildly swinging boats on a whirling carousel and unpredictable furniture. Guaranteed to entertain. And with each new experience, the brave become even braver. There's a splendid zoo in the western outskirts of the city. As with many of the city's parks, it originated in the early years of the Republic.
Atatürk believed that parks and leisure areas in general were essential to the good health of the nation and hence of the new national capital. General Mustafa Kemal successfully acquired today's region of Turkey, founded the Republic and was its first president. He was referred to as Atatürk, father of the Turks. Thus, he wanted to draw his people closer to the animal world. Since then, the zoo has, along with indigenous animals such as wolves and bears, also accommodated wildlife from distant continents. Among many others, there are camels, birds of prey, hens and monkeys. The zoo is the subject of constant expansion. Entry to the sea house is by way of a huge shark's mouth. The memorial to the victorious on Ullas Square features Atatürk mounted high on a horse and commemorates the heroes of the War of Independence. All around, the traffic reigns supreme. Traces of the Roman city are well preserved. Near Ullas Square, are the splendid remains of the Karachara Spring Baths. The impressive foundation walls of various halls and the remaining elements of underfloor heating highlight the size and the opulence of the baths. The Karachala Baths honoured Asclepius, god of health, and were destroyed by fire in the 10th century. Many Romans came here in the afternoon to bathe and participate in sporting activities, as physical health played an important role in their daily lives. The Roman baths were built in the lower, sheltered areas of the city. Monumental areas follow one after the other. Rows of spacious courtyards of columned galleries and adjoining domed roofs. The Temple of Augustus is situated on a nearby hill, or rather the ruined walls of the shrine built in 25 BC. To honour the Roman Emperor Augustus, the texts of his grand legacy were written into the walls, parts of which remain today. In 1427, next to the Temple of Augustus, a mosque and later a mausoleum to commemorate the Hachi Bairam was built. This revered holy man founded the Bairami Order in Ankara, a dervish order dedicated to social duties. This holy site enhances the significance of the city. Ankara, Turkey's capital city, is full of contradictions. And yet it's the extraordinary charm of this remarkable metropolis that makes everything make sense. Ankara is undoubtedly the main link between modern European culture 
and rich Osmanic traditions.